Hello, welcome back. Well, last time I was talking to you about input, right? Well, now it's my turn to talk to you about output. The one thing that I want you to keep in mind is that when I mention all these devices that I will be talking about, I want you to think of them from the perspective of being output devices, okay? Then we will have my colleagues will go a little bit more in detail in regards to those devices. But for now, we're just going to look at the general specs, okay? Let's get started. So what is output? In the last time we began by thinking, you know, by specifying what input was. So output is what comes out, is the information, or in other words, is the process data. Remember what I told you. I told you when you have something that it's coming in, the input is data. Then your computer is going to do the work, you know, it's going to process it out, and when it throws it out, it's going to be actual information because it's going to give you something that is helpful. It's not just numbers, it's not just letters, but it's something that you can actually use. And output can come in different ways, you know, in different shapes and forms, and those shapes and forms are determined by the output device that is used, okay? So let's begin by taking a look at the different output types. So what can we see? You know, what can we expect to come out? Well, to begin, we have audio. And I want you to think when I tell you of this, where is it coming from? Okay, so the audio is coming from, you know, I'm not going to tell you, that's up to you. Next one, you can have output in the way of video. And where would you be able to see this video? I want you to think about that. There is another kind of output, the most common one, you know, is text. So you see text, you read it, you understand it, and where does it come from? And you have graphics, okay? So all of those are different kinds of output. And in order for you to get it, you need a particular device. For example, for the audio, you're going to need to have a speaker. But text will not really be able to come out using a speaker, right? So you know that there are certain things that you look at and that you expect them to come out from a certain device, OK? So uh, it is common sense. But sometimes some things are tricky. And, and we'll see that as, as we move on. Okay, so then let's take a look at some of the output devices. Okay, so in regards to this, we are thinking of, you know, those devices that allow me to get a particular kind of, or a, a particular type of, of output to me. So I want to begin with the monitor, whether it is your computer monitor or your TV monitor, there is a particular output device. Number two. You have printers, just like the one that is in there, and that's when we say, oh, it's a hard copy. Usually a soft copy you read within your monitor, a hard copy is something that you can take with you, and it's usually somewhere in paper, right? And then, just like we were talking about audio, then we have the speakers, okay? So, monitors and printers allow you to have text in them, both of them, or allow them to have graphics in both of them, right? Because you can have a pamphlet or an essay or something where you have a lot of text, but you also have a lot of, um, a lot of pictures, okay? So that will allow you to mix and match. However, you cannot mix and match within the, those and the speaker, for example, okay? So let's move on. You know, we have looked at the output devices, but, and I told you that the one that you were looking at were the monitor, right? Was the monitor, whether you're watching this on TV or if you're watching it in your computer, okay? So let's take a look at something. I, let's get more information about monitors. Let's take a look at some monitor specifications. For example, when they talk about clarity, they are trying to tell you how sharp is the image. Okay, if you think about it, in the past, it wasn't that sharp. It wasn't that clear either, and it didn't even have color. It was black and white. The resolution, how many pixels do you find in the monitor, okay? You may think that the larger the monitor, the more pixels you will have, but then there is a ratio, right? It can be very small and have a lot of pixels. Therefore, the resolution will be fantastic. It will be great. It will be big. 
the dot pitch, that is the distance between pixels, and that I'm going to stop here and tell you a little bit about it. So you may have a lot of pixels, right? But maybe you have a very large uh, monitor. So the, you know, the distance between pixels, the dot pitch, is if you have a pixel here and another here, and they are pretty close, then it's sharper and the image is better. If you have it a little bit more, uh, you know, set apart or even further, then you have this space, the blank space in the middle, and it doesn't allow you to see a such great image as if your dot pitch, you know, as if everything is like crammed together, because then you can see that the rest, you know, the way that, that your, the image looks, it looks much better. So watch out for that dot pitch, and remember the distance, the smaller the distance, the better. The distance, if it's big, then no, because one pixel is over there, the other one is over there, you can't really see them to working together, and that's the whole point, that we want to see them closer so that we can have a richer image. Okay, let's go back. We have the contrast ratio, which is uh, between black and white, and basically what we're talking in here is that how black is the blackest black, I know, it sounds funny, and how white is the whitest white. So. What we have is that if the black isn't that black and the white isn't that white, then it's more grayish, right? So one color is going to get confused with the other and it's not going to look good. So when you think about contrast ratio, you want the white to be super white and you want the black to be super black. Therefore, all the colors in the middle are really well defined, okay? So that is another special characteristic of your monitor. Let's go back. Then you have the size, which you're probably more familiar, you know, it's the diagonal measurements of your monitor. And you have the aspect ratio, because now we see that some TVs or some monitors are much wider, you know, so what is the aspect, the ratio between the width and the height, okay? So, with that, that is the characteristics of how you can get to see something and see it differently and see it better. Now. Let's take a look at the different kinds of monitors there are. I'm just sort of going to go over them because there more detail will be forthcoming, okay? So let's go back in there. So what kinds of monitors can we look at? Well, we have the old CRT, those you can see in old computers and maybe in some of the hardware that we have been showing here um, around uh, in our class, right? We have the LED ones. We have nowadays something in here, actually here at Leeward, we have smart boards, right? And they are fantastic to use because actually when you use them, you can actually draw in them and then you can save the images. And not, not just that, actually you have the board and you can actually point and click within the board, you can drag things, just like if it was a touch screen kind of, uh, well, a touch screen, right? But instead of being a screen, it's actually a board, and within the board you have special markers that you can use to, to write, so it's analog because you can write, is your complete writing, and it writes in a different color depending on the marker that you're using. Then the images that are there, you can actually save them as an image, and you know, I, I used to use that a lot, and download that image and send it to my students. So, for those that didn't want to take notes or didn't have the time because they, the class was so interesting that they didn't want to miss a bit, you know, like writing notes, then I will send the notes to them. So smart boards are pretty good and nice to use in class. Let's continue. We have high definition TV. Probably you have one of those right in front of you. If you are coming to class at Leeward, probably you have seen some of the projectors, which is yet another kind of monitor. But the last one is the one that I think that you are probably the most familiar with, and that is the touch screen. So let's think about that. The touch screen actually has everything, everything in one. Remember when I showed you last time that I showed you my Blackberry, it had the monitor and it had the keyboard. Well, guess what? When you have a device all in one, everything is together, meaning that if something doesn't go well, you know, your, your keyboard, you can even access your keyboard if anything goes wrong with your screen, which is kind of an all-in-one deal. So, let's see what that is. Our all-in-one deal is 
anything, you know, that you can actually find in a mobile device. So, as we mentioned before some time, we said that first computer systems were all in one. Then they moved and then they said, okay, monitor here, you know, keyboard there. So everything was now in different areas. It was in pieces. Now we went back to an all-in-one model and that is the phone that you have right in front of you or the tablet, okay? So you have to really protect it, make sure it doesn't fall because not just the screen gets ruined, your keyboard and all those things that are in there can get ruined as well, okay? Well, take care of yourself, take care of your monitor, the monitors in your life and I'll see you around.